Like these, please, gentlemen. Persons Unknown by Finn Kennedy. Gentlemen, it is an honour to introduce Lieutenant General Sir Henry Tudor, Police Advisor to Ireland. Thank you, Mr Sturgis. My understanding from Mr Churchill is that the role is Chief of Police. But nonetheless, it is a pleasure to be addressing you all today. You shall find me to be a man entirely above politics, so I shall get straight to the point. Due to a widespread campaign of intimidation, <coughs> the Royal Irish Constabulary's strength and morale is on the verge of collapse. Ambushes, robberies, burning police barracks, boycotts of you and your families, your officers' wives and girlfriends having their hair cut off, yep. and at worst, Targeted assassinations. This cannot be allowed to continue. The Sinn Féin murder gang behind all of this are common criminals, hiding behind the fig leaf of nationalism. The whole country is intimidated and will thank God for strong measures. I am pleased to be able to confirm such measures today. The Restoration of Order in Ireland Act allows for the creation of a new auxiliary division, a temporary gendarmerie composed of the finest ex-officers of the war. They will strengthen your numbers on patrol and conduct raids and checkpoints of their own. The same act replaces criminal courts with courts martial, coroner's inquests with military courts of inquiry, and allows for the withholding of grant money to disaffected regions, where these criminals have taken over the reins of power. Taken together, these measures are intended to offer you, our most loyal senior officers, the fullest support in the most drastic action against that band of assassins, the so-called IRA. Good morning, gentlemen. Sir. Sir. Lovely day for it. You must be Lieutenant Harris. Yes, sir. And you, Captain uh, Murray, sir. Murray. Brigadier Thorne. Good to be working with you, sir. Uh, yes, seconded. Armoured car for Brigadier Thorne. Right. Let's get on with this, shall we? Bags in the boot. I'll explain in the car. Galway RIC Barracks, please, driver. I assume you know it. So here's a copy of the Act itself and the formal Constitution documents. Copies came in on the night mail. As you'll see, it's the usual legalese, but I've been fully briefed by Dublin Castle. I heard they brought in Henry Tudor. Sir Henry Tudor, indeed. In my view, the war's finest general. Is it true he invented smoke bombs? I believe it is. To cover manoeuvres. Clever. Tudor's an expert tactician. Which brings me to today's business. As of midnight, civilian coroner's inquests into any and all unexplained or suspicious deaths are to be suspended and replaced. By us. An eight-week secondment in darkest Galway. Lucky us. How does this all work, then? We, gentlemen, are the judge, jury and executioner. So to speak. All unexplained deaths in the greater Galway region will now come before us as a panel and us alone. We are the court of inquiry and our verdicts hold. So, like an inquest? Only quicker. Much quicker. You both come highly recommended from your regiments as men of integrity and honour. I trust you'll discharge this duty like any other. Of course, sir. But, but I don't have any legal or, or medical... You don't I... have to. <laughs> Read it. Lieutenant Harris. Sir. Where have you served in this godforsaken bog? Dublin, of course. Prior to that, my regiment was posted in Limerick. Limerick? I prefer Dublin for the mailboats. I like to write to my wife and son every day. Oh, good man. How about you, sir? Oh, I just got here. It's even worse than they said. I meant, are you married, sir? Only to the army. Ah. Which means a girl in every town. <laughs> Very good, sir. 
Merrick. I can't make head nor tail of this. I'm, I'm more used to active operations. Then you, Captain Murray, shall be our scribe. A scribe? Checkpoint coming up. ID's ready, fellas. Good morning, Brigadier. Good morning, Sergeant. It's Superintendent. Oh, I thought this damn rain might have stopped in the West. No such luck. A straightforward journey, I hope. Uneventful enough. You run a tight ship down here. I saw regular patrols. Thank you, sir. How are your auxiliaries settling in? Very good. We're grateful for the extra manpower. Mm, they'll serve you well. Most were in Flanders, where I was. Officers, you couldn't ask for fire. We look forward to working with them. This is Lieutenant Harris and Captain Murray. Morning. Morning. Superintendent Ryan. Together we'll conduct the inquiry. Very good. I'll show you to your quarters. It's just the barracks, I'm afraid, but... I'll no, no, send our bags ahead. First things first. I believe you have a body for us. Right. Yes. Sadly so. It's one of our own. He's this way. Here. What's this? For the stink. Just smear a dab under your nostrils. Thanks. Thank you. It's the season. Nothing keeps. I don't need any. Suit yourself. <coughs> Meet Sergeant Timothy Horan. What's left of him? Shot a point blank range, pretty much. Just yards from his front door. And in front of his wife and children. Good grief. A good officer. A real loss. And the autopsy report? We haven't... Uh, there isn't... Then you'll need to find a doctor. The thing is, it's difficult to find doctors for this kind of work. Autopsies? Assassinations? I read this was a robbery gone wrong. Well, we won't know until the court hears from the witnesses. Then you'll have to do it yourself. The autopsy. But I'm not medic... Then ask your auxiliaries. One of them should be... They're all out on patrol. There's five pounds and five shillings in it, Sergeant. Not bad for an open and shut case, wouldn't you say? I'd say so, sir. I'll need the report within the hour. Right you are. Now, if you could show us to our inquiry room. Everyone ready? Sir. Sir. Is the witness here? Waiting in the corridor. I hope you can write quickly, Murray. I'll try, sir. I have an injury in my writing hand. Oh? Uh, shrapnel, from the front. Ah. I tend to get cramp. All the more reason to exercise it. Uh, yes, sir. First witness, please, Harris. Just over here. Thank you. You may sit or stand. I'll stand. <clears throat> This is the proceedings of a court of inquiry in lieu of inquest into the death of RIC Sergeant Timothy Horan on the 17th of September 1920. Held in pursuance of Regulation 81 of the Restoration of Order in Ireland Act. Court is in session at Galway RIC Barracks. Brigadier Arnold Thorne presiding. Accompanied by Lieutenant Colonel Stanley Harris and Captain James Murray. A reminder that this court is being held in camera for the protection of witnesses and personnel. Press are permitted, but none are present. The court confirms this morning it viewed the body of the deceased with an autopsy report due imminently. Keeping up, Murray? Uh, yes, sir. Just about, sir. Good morning, madam. Good morning. I'm Brigadier Thorne. This is Lieutenant Colonel Harris and Captain Murray. Please state your name and your relation to the deceased. Margaret Elizabeth Horan. I'm his wife. Widow. Wife. Thank you. Lieutenant Colonel Harris will now ask you to swear the oath. Please place your hand on the Bible and repeat after me. I pledge to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. I pledge to tell the truth. The whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Please give an account of Friday's events. Well, it was about half past seven. 
I'm sorry. It's just hard to believe it was only last week. Alice, handkerchief. Yes, sir. Thank you. It was Timothy's birthday. I was waiting for him to return from his shift. He was on his bike. The children and I had baked him a cake. Victoria Sponge, his favourite. I heard his bicycle bell out front and thought we'd all step out and surprise him. He'd stopped to chat to a small group of men, stood behind the low wall on the lane next to our house. Hands in your head. Oh. I had his cake in my hands. Easy now, lads. The kids peering round, trying not to giggle. Shh, weapons on the ground. I couldn't really see what was going on. Step away from the bike. Until it was too late. Mighty. Go back he in. He sounded panicked. I'd never heard him sound like that before. Go back in and close the door. It was then that I realised. He was being held at gunpoint. Put your weapons and keep your life. Timothy. Go in. All I remember was dropping the cake. Go in now. Children, go back in. Now. It's your gun that we want. By order of the Irish Republican Army. But don't forget, we know where you live. But Timmy wasn't going to stand for any of that. I stayed looking just long enough to see him draw his service revolver. No, you don't. No! No! Stay down. It's all right. It's all right. Oh, Timmy. Oh, God. Oh, God. Thank you. That will be all. Court is adjourned for lunch. How old's your son, Harris? Six. And we've another on the way. Ah, congratulations. <laughs> I've got a picture somewhere. How about you, Murray? None yet. Not even a sweetheart? More's the pity. Here. Danny's his name. Ah. He looks like you. Ah, <laughs> poor sod. <laughs> I'd love a family. All in good time. How on earth is this life compatible? Well, Mary, the truth is, it isn't. If I never eat another Irish stew again, it will be too soon. It's no worse than army grub. In the trenches, maybe. Dublin Barracks, at least, has a half-decent cook. How's the hand, Captain? Sore. What was it? Artillery? Uh, shrapnel. A hand bomb. Nothing like close quarters. I hope you finished him. Well... I'm still here. <laughs> Good man. Where were you stationed? Uh, the Somme, mostly. You? E. Do you ever miss it? Miss it? Well, look where we've ended up. A cowardly enemy who won't even show their face. Farmhands with pistols. Hmm, quite right. Degenerate race. We're all part Irish, aren't we? Speak for yourself. I had an Irish gunner covering my unit once. His incompetence cost us countless men. I'd have shot him myself if the Hun hadn't done it for me. Sorry to hear that. The Irish regiments weren't too bad where we were. At least the Germans were real soldiers. Organised. Hmm. Brave. Even if they were squirming on the end of my knife. Here they shoot you in the back and run. Let the orcs is at him, I say. Is it any wonder there are reprisals? Reprisals? Out there in the field. The stress you men are under. Ambushes. Assassinations. Who <laughs> blame you? I try to run a disciplined unit, sir. It's the shinners need disciplining. I hope you do when you get your hands on them. I would. Who are we seeing this afternoon? How do you mean? Uh, witnesses. In the Horan case. Ah, that was it. Just the widow. Yes, it's time to write up the verdict and we can all get to the pub. But, but, th there must be lots of witnesses. It was a busy lane after work. This is something you'll learn about the mendacious Irish, Murray. There's streets of witnesses when it's one of us who pulled the trigger. Not so many when it was one of their own. Uh, but aren't we at least going to try to establish the identity of the killers? <laughs> Good luck with that. Save your writing hand. There'll be many more. We, the undersigned, being a court of inquiry in lieu of inquest, do hereby authorise the release of the body of RIC Sergeant Timothy Horan 
to his next of kin for burial. Cause of death established as shock and hemorrhage caused by a gunshot wound to the face at close range by person or persons unknown. Signatures, please, gentlemen. Sorry to interrupt, sir. We were just finishing. There's been another. Oh, for goodness sake. A woman sake. this time. A woman? Some kind of ricochet from a patrol. Oh, book it in for tomorrow. We're heading for the pub. Right. Right you are. Where do the Yorkies drink? That'll be the king's head. That's what I like to see. A pub full of our boys. What can I get you? Gentlemen, this one's on me. Are you there, Commander? These two, not that lot. It's just they rack up quite a tab. Glad to hear it. And don't always pay. I think a few on the house is the least you can do. Given the protection they're providing, loyalty is priceless. Uh, three of them out. Not so many RIC chaps in today. I hear they're quitting in their droves. Don't believe everything you read. Well, you can understand an Irishman's discomfort. Discomfort about what? Killing their countrymen. The IRA is the murder gang, Murray. Quite right. Yes, sir. The RIC is the police force tasked with rounding them up. All, all I meant was... Landlord, when does your pub feel safer? With these boys, or a pub full of IRA? I feel safe whenever I get paid. What you blight? The Empire's pride stands side by side upon the battlefield. Mm. Sir, sir, what are you doing? Instilling morale. Like knights of old, so brave and bold, the king and flag to shield. Sir, is, is this such a... Join in, for each brave heart will do his part for country and for king. And gladly go to meet the foe, just hear them proudly sing. By order of the king, God bless him, we'll fight and win or die. The empire and the king, God bless him, is the nation's cry. Our country's pride and our fighting, God bless them and victory bring. For they are gladly dying just to keep the old flag flying. By order <laughs> Very good, sir. <laughs> the fatal wound was in the groin area, I believe. And Dr. Foley staunched as much of the bleeding as he could, but at such a late stage of pregnancy, it was difficult to access the injury or tie a tourniquet. And I attended her as she lay dying. For how long? Several hours. Some local women came and tried to save the unborn child, but to no avail. Thank you, Father. Ellen told me she could identify her killer before she died. Thank you. That will be all. And that the fatal shots were fired from a passing army vehicle carrying auxiliaries. Stop writing, Murray. I'm afraid hearsay is inadmissible as evidence, Father Considine. This is direct testimony from the deceased. It can hardly be direct then, can it? It would have been if the RAC constable you sent was prepared to take her statement, but he was we not. We have heard from several RIC personnel this afternoon. None of whom were there. Gentlemen, forgive me. This was a young mother, heavily pregnant. Nursing her youngest child on the wall outside. I understand house. your to proximity whom was she a to this case. Who would do I can such see a thing? Is clouding your rational mind? And what's rational about taking pot shots at a mother and child? As we have heard, it is a standard precautionary tactic to loose off a shot or two when approaching a bend mm -hmm. in any road in case of ambush. May I suggest an adjournment? Seconded. Approved. What? Court you is adjourned just... for deliberation. Smoke. 
Thanks. I'll pay you back. You don't have to. Letter from home? Yes. <clears throat> uh, how are you finding it? All this? It's days like today which makes this eight weeks feel like forever. <laughs> well put. I mean, why are we even here? Think of it as a mission. Like any other. King and country. Hold your tongue and grit your teeth. I mean, Ireland. What is here that could possibly be worth all this? <sighs> Pride. This place is the canary in the mine. What news from home? <sighs> hmm? In your letter. Oh. Uh, just my wife, Jane. She's unwell. Sorry to hear that, sir. It's... the pregnancy. Ah. Hmm. <clears throat> I'll, um, leave you to it. Harris? Sir, I'll see you inside. Finish deliberating? Something like that, yes. Smoke, sir. Not unless you have a cigar. Afraid not. Murray. Yes, sir. An Irish name, is it not? Ah, distantly. Ulster, I believe. Generations ago. Hmm. How's the hand? Sore. Clench and unclench your fist. Like this. It's a lot to write down. Then write less. We're barely establishing the fact as it is. I beg to differ. Then why have we adjourned? For deliberation. <laughs> to, um, deliberate what? Why wasn't Father Considine allowed to finish? The witness had become emotional. Why wouldn't the RIC officer, a policeman, take the victim's statement? Captain Murray. Why, why was a nursing mother shot at all? As we have heard, an unfortunate ricochet from a curve in the Th road. This sort of thing didn't happen in Flanders. Did you ever see a case of shell shock at the front? Several times, yes. Mm, dreadful condition. It is. Did you know it's contagious? Uh, no, I did not. One damn fool catches it and soon the whole regiment are gibbering. Is that right? Oh, yes. It can cause a complete collapse in morale. After the Somme, a fifth of recorded casualties were for shell shock. Well, that is a lot. Yeah, it crippled the infantry. But after Passchendaele, which was worse, the same condition affected barely one in a hundred. That's a lot less. Do you know why? Why? They instructed the medical officers at the forward dressing stations to record it differently. Deafness, concussion, war neurosis. And thus, with the stroke of a pen, the problem was contained. The contagion stymied. That's what we are doing here, Captain. How so? Our findings are a matter of public record. They'll be reported everywhere from Manchester to New York and perhaps even read into the parliamentary record. Our job is not to investigate, but contain. Rebellion is contagious, you see, and information, its vector of transmission. W what's this? Father Considine's testimony. Burn it. What? Right here, right now. But... but Use I, your lighter. I, I'll keep watch. Look, he's drawn a picture. Who? Considine. It's Ellen Quinn's road. Straight as an arrow. In both directions. St Anne's Church, Shanaglish, please, driver. <clears throat> Thank you all for making it in good time. Captain Murray, Brigadier Thorne, this is Dr Sandys. Gentlemen. Oh. So, to recap... We have an unauthorised burial reported in Shanaglish Parish. So today's autopsy and inquiry is taking place on the road, so to speak. There's no need for this to take long. It is the wretched men's funeral after all. Pat and Harry Lochnan, 22 and 27. Farm labourers from Shanaglish. Arrested by auxiliaries last Tuesday on suspicion of murder. One of them, our RIC man, Timothy Horan. Both active Sinn Féin members. 
They were taken to Gort Barracks for interrogation, from where they escaped. Escaped? As will be testified. So why have they turned up dead in a lake one week later? That's what we are here to find out, Captain Murray. Is it really necessary to interrupt their funeral? The Act of Parliament under which we're all operating does not authorise any funeral until we have completed our work. We're expecting a hostile crowd. Oh, great. I wouldn't worry. I'm known to the family. Nevertheless, Smithy up top will keep the machine gun trained, just in case. Murray, bring the crowbars. Come! Why are they here? Blackouts! Blackouts! Murders! Murders! Get out! I'm looking for Father Nagel. Here? I'm Brigadier Thorne of Galway Barracks, RIC Courts of Inquiry. You have a damned cheek coming in here. This is an unauthorized burial. Have you no respect? I respect the law, as should you. I'll need you to send the mourners out. And what? And open the coffins. Dr. Sandys here must inspect the bodies before they can be released for interment. I'm sorry, Colin. James, is this really necessary? I'll make it as swift as I can. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wouldn't mind waiting outside for a few moments. Thank you. Murray, Harris, crowbars. The lids were then removed from the coffins and I proceeded to examine the bodies. They were not removed from the coffins. Both bodies were badly charred. The first said to be Patrick Lochnan, was unrecognisable. The skull was extensively fractured and part was missing. His brother, Harry Lochnan, might just have been recognised by the relatives. Part of the face was left. The bodies were so charred that all marks of identification had been obliterated. In my opinion, both bodies had been dead at least a week. Thank you, Dr. Sandys. Lieutenant Colonel Harris, next witness, please. Please state your full name and relation to the deceased. Catherine Nora Lochnan. I am the sister of Patrick and Harry Lochnan. Accompanied by... The Dr. Andrew Cummins, solicitor for the family. Place your hand on the Bible and repeat after me. I'm not swearing. Just do it, Catherine. No. Just take the damn oath, woman. Patrick and Harry were arrested on the 26th of November by the auxiliary force and taken into Gort Barracks. My mother inquired at Gort Barracks and was told that they had been taken away again. I inquired at Eglinton Barracks, by the jail, by Earl's Island, Galway, but could get no news of them. On December 4th, I went to Lenaboy and interviewed the commanding officer of the Auxiliary Division. He told me they were arrested with 12 others and that eight escaped that night. Were your brothers among them? Supposedly running south. Strike supposedly. He took my name and address and said he would inquire and let me know. I heard nothing more. We'll check the officer's logs. On the evening of the 5th, I heard that the bodies of my two brothers had been found. I went to Kinvara, whither the bodies had been removed, and found them in a bag. Unauthorised removal of bodies. Go on, Catherine. I recognised both. (laughs) They were badly charred. The face of one was missing. The face of the other, Harry, remained from the mouth upwards. Both faces were black and burned. The skull of my oldest brother, Patrick, was missing. 
The back part of the skull of Harry was gone. Give that hand a rest, Murray. Gentlemen, please, it is important that the court hears. I recognised Harry from his features beyond all shadows of doubt. I cannot say the same for Patrick. Thank you, that will be all. But I could recognise him from the breadth of his shoulders and his stature. Thank you. His stature. Harris. <laughs> it's this way out. No, no. What should I write? I do this. Inadmissible. She didn't take the oath. But, sir. Court is adjourned. <sighs> Spare one? Of course. <sighs> Thanks. How many more to go? They're queuing down the corridor. I don't know why they bother. It'll be death by misadventure. Personal persons unknown. What about compensation for, for the family? <laughs> don't be daft. Then what are we doing here? Our duty, Captain. Our duty. How's your wife? Oh, um... She lost the baby. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Thanks. Will you, uh... What, 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 what will you do? Right back. Murray, a word. <clears throat> yes, sir. I'll see you back in there. <clears throat> we won't be long. Sir. You're looking a bit green about the gills. Those boys were in quite a state. Nothing we haven't seen in Flanders. Actually, I never saw anything like that. This is a different kind of battle. We fought with honour. Do you not understand our part in this one yet? Well, it isn't to inquire. No, it's to efface. Efface? For the greater good. You mean cover up? I mean cover one another. But this is Britain, sir. We fight fair. Do we? Remember Henry Tudor's smoke bombs? Now that's what I call fair. What you have to understand, Captain, is that this comes from the very top. How do you mean? Reprisals and their aftermath. Spreading our terror, but not theirs. Turning the monster around on itself. Fighting fire with fire. How far up? Henry Tudor. Of course, but... Dublin Castle. Westminster. Churchill. Churchill? I believe it was he who first proposed it. We are not going to win this war by acting like barbarians. All wars are won like that, Captain Murray. The deciding factor is who knows about it. Last orders at the bar, ladies and gents. Last orders at the bar. Uh, three double scotches. Uh, th thank you, sir, but I think I'm going to call it a night. Uh, me too. Nonsense. It's been a long day. Nearly our last. Indeed. Doing our duty. For eight <laughs> long weeks we'll never get back. And now it's my duty to look after my men. That's very kind, sir. Loyalty, gentlemen. Loyalty is all. Three double whiskies. Coming right up. Scotch, not Irish. <laughs> the Empire's pride stands side by side upon the battlefield. Fighting. God, God bless them, them and, and victory, bring. And victory bring, for, for they, they are gladly dying, dying just to keep the old flag flying, by order of the, of the king. king. <laughs> is the barracks this way? You're coming with us. It's past midnight. The night is young. Actually, sir, I was going to head back to... No, oh, what's the matter, Murray? Fine young man like you. We need to find ourselves some women. This one's married, so he's under the thumb. But you... Do you think a passing patrol might give me a lift? Knock a paddy off his bike. Use that. <laughs> Very good, sir. Come on, Murray. 
I know the perfect place. Shown as it's called. They'll look after us there. So long as you don't mind screwing the Irish too. Doing that already, aren't we? <laughs> I, I suppose we are! <laughs> I'll see you chaps on Monday. Yes, sir. Here. Get yourself a carriage. Oh. Sir, that's, that's really too much. I don't want you coming a cropper on these streets. That young family needs you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Until Monday. 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 To Shona's. Murderers. What's that? What, sir? What did he just fucking call us? I, I, I didn't hear. Hey! Leave him be, eh? Hey! Paddy! Are you talking to me? Yes, Paddy, I am. The name's Richard, if we're doing introductions. If you have something to say to a British officer, say it to his face. All right, then. Murderers. Murdering blackguards, the lot of yous. Why, you little... Sir, let's just go to Shona's, eh? You two off to Shona's. She saves all the special girls for you English. The ones with the clap. I'm arresting you on suspicion of being a member of a oh, prescribed organisation. Oh, you're arresting me! Murray, use your cuffs. Big man. Watch your toe. I'll speak as I wish. You'll speak as I ask you. It's my country. Come on, then. You feeble paddy bastard. Sir. Come on. Sir. Back me up, chap. But back me up. Not so cocky now, eh, paddy? How about another? And another. Oh, all right, that's enough. Now, what's the matter, Captain? Divided loyalty. No, sir, just... And another. No. Finish it. <coughs> but, sir... Prove I... yourself, Ulsterman. Whose side are you on? Finish it! This is the proceedings of a court of inquiry in lieu of inquest into the death of one Richard Leonard on 23rd of November, 1920. Brigadier Arnold Thorne presiding, accompanied by Lieutenant Colonel Stanley Harris and Captain Harold Fleming. <clears throat> the court confirms that this morning it viewed the body of the deceased, apparently shot in the face after a late-night brawl outside the King's Head pub, High Street, Galway, by person or persons unknown. Are you keeping up there, Fleming? Trying to, sir. Yes. If your hand gets sore, try flexing your fist like this. Thank you, sir. I will. Our last scribe kept getting cramp. Yes. Dreadful condition. No good for this. Got put back on patrol. Lucky bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be sure to flex. Good man. Harris... Show the first witness in, please. Yes, sir. Lieutenant General Sir Henry Hugh Tudor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It is both an honour and a privilege to accept this appointment of Inspector General of Police and Prisons for Mandatory Palestine and Transjordan. As the commissioning panel will know, I come with considerable experience in Ireland where, before I took over, it is fair to say that the Royal Irish Constabulary were running scared of the Irish Republican Army, rending law and order in the province all but impossible. My policy of bolstering their beleaguered ranks with auxiliary divisions of former British soldiers did much to turn that situation around and to make life tolerable once more for ordinary citizens. If the Governor's Office for Palestine and Transjordan approve, I would like to propose a similar surge in the region, made up of the finest and most disciplined ranks of former British soldiers, the Black and Tans, whose intervention in Ireland did so much to restore law and order, paving the way for peace. Of 
In Persons Unknown by Finn Kennedy, the role of Brigadier Arnold Thorne was played by Jim Conway. The role of Lieutenant Colonel Stanley Harris was played by Connor Dunn. The role of Captain James Murray was played by Joshua Hurley. The roles of Margaret Horan and Catherine Lochnan were played by Kira Lane. The roles of Superintendent Ryan and the Landlord were played by Kean Lorcan. The roles of Father Considine, Dr. Cummin and Dr. Sandys were played by Owen Slattery. All other parts were played by members of the company. The director was Anastasia Osei Kufour, with sound design by Farrakh Sultani. The producer was Finn Kennedy. Special thanks to Iqbal Singh, Michael Mahoney, Will Butler, Sarah Griffiths and Barbara Bergen. Persons Unknown was an Applied Stories production for the National Archives. For more information, please visit nationalarchives.gov.uk or appliedstories.co.uk.